Okay, so we are coming up to you with live from the Hilt interview series. Um, so today we have uh, Natalie Frey from Utah Valley Medical Center. Um, and so Natalie, if you could just kind of briefly introduce yourself, um, you know, your job title, where you're from, stuff like that. Yeah, my name is Natalie Fry. Um, I'm a physical therapist who is working in a pediatric um, clinic. Um, the clinic is a combination of PT, OT, and speech therapy services. And our model is um, neurodevelopmental clinic. So we see kids from birth to 18. Mm -hmm. um, I am originally born and uh, raised in California. And mm -hmm moved up here to go to the University of Washington for undergrad in 2002, and then um, was able to attend the uh, Doctor of Physical Therapy program at UW, um, and I graduated in 2014. Wow, so you left the sun for, for rain, and you, yes. <laughs> you yeah. gave up here. Um, yeah. Well, I would imagine that to be a physical therapist, there's there's a lot of education, you know, involved. And could you just maybe talk a little bit about like the education that, that got you to where you are right now? Yeah. Um, so when I graduated with my undergrad degree, it it was a um, a double degree in Spanish and sociology, so mm -hmm. not very um, medical related. I had always been really interested in the body and um, and medicine, um, mm -hmm. but I just knew that the medical school path was not a good fit for me. Um, and so I spent the next couple of years kind of working and figuring out what I wanted to do. And um, one of my first jobs out of college was working at the Seattle Children's Research Institute. And mm -hmm. I was able to volunteer in their hospital in the physical therapy um, department. And um, I think that's kind of what grabbed my attention. I really enjoyed working with those the other therapists i thought there was a lot of interesting diagnoses to learn about and so um, the next couple of years were spent um, working as a rehab aide which is a common um, position for i would say more transitionary or younger people um, in a variety of clinic settings so more like an outpatient orthopedic setting hmm. sports medicine setting and i did that for several years while i was working on my prerequisites to get into the program um, which involved some physics, chemistry, biology, um, along with kind of your regular, you need a bachelor's degree to do the program. So your four-year undergraduate degree. Gotcha, gotcha. So sounds like it's it's nice to hear that even if you're kind of majoring at first in those non-sciences like sociology, eventually if that interest arises, you are able to kind of go into the healthcare field and still succeed. Um, and you mentioned there about kind of being a rehab aid before you really kind of took the dive. And I'm curious, was there like a moment that really clicked for you? Like, I want to be a physical therapist, or was it a culmination of moments that made you realize like, this is the job or profession that is, that is my calling? Yeah, I mean, I think the interest sparked and I was pretty committed after volunteering, but I was a little bit older and I wanted to make sure that this was something that I was going to enjoy doing, you know, five days a week. Um, and so the rehab aid position was really nice because I got to, I wanted to make sure that I worked there in a clinic setting and kind of learned as much as I could to see if it was still something that really interested me. So I would say more of a culmination and realizing mm -hmm. that, you know, I enjoyed the work, I enjoyed working with the patients and um, the prerequisites. It was, you know, more fun to take those when you knew right. you were going towards, you know, the goal of trying to get into the program. Um, and then the program itself, um, I don't think I kind of explained at the beginning, it's a three year um, doctor of physical therapy program. So it's a pretty long program. Mm. Um, and, um, but again, the material was interesting to me you know, much more even than undergrad stuff that I had done because it was really something that grabbed my attention. Right, right. That must have been a lot of studying that I would imagine. Did you kind of have resources help you out with that or were you always a very smart cookie from the get-go and you, you didn't need <laughs> no, any help? No, <laughs> I, I think, I think I, I'd like to think of myself as smart, but um, yeah. it, the sciences were tough for me. I mean, I mm. really enjoyed biology. I really enjoyed anatomy, um, but 
there's a lot to remember and um, the chemistry and the physics were challenging for me. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of plotted through, you know, we had study groups and, um, and I was a little bit older at that time. So mm. I was out of practice, you know, studying and um, yeah, I mean, it, it was challenging. I would say it didn't, that stuff doesn't come, all of it doesn't come completely naturally to me, but I think, the body and how it works kind of does and how it moves. Mm. And um, that stuff was a little bit easier for me. I see, I see. Well, um, that's really cool to hear that, you know, even if you are, are not kind of in the traditional route of college and the straight to physical therapy, you can take some time off and take a few paths and turns, but eventually you'll be able to kind of find the educational pathway to, to where you wanna go. Um, I guess now that you've kind of explained a little bit about your background, we'd love to hear about what is the day in the life of a physical therapist? And I imagine that there is no typical day, but if there is like a perhaps exciting day that you can let us know about, um, you know, what you see and think and do, that would be really great to hear. Yeah. So for me, again, a little bit different, I think, than I would say that PT is kind of spread out into hospital inpatient based. Um, so people who are ill or recovering in the hospital, outpatient like sports medicine based, which would be you or me if we had an injury, um, and then pediatrics um, and some other specialty populations, um, also like skilled nursing and geriatrics. Um, so for me, my day is, um, you know, I'm a, we, we are connected with Valley Medical Center. So um, we are technically, a, we're a hospital-based outpatient clinic. So um, I like the outpatient because you get your schedule ahead of time um, mm -hmm. and you can plan your day how, kind of how you want it within the morning and the afternoon. Um, our clinic works 10-hour days, which is a lot for some people, but I really like it because then you get done with your work week a little bit faster. <laughs> right. um, and I see everything <clears throat> from... Uh, babies who are having difficulty with developmental milestones um, mm. to kids with genetic or chromosomal um, diagnoses, um, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, um, some kids who have had um, issues with other neurological stuff like seizures or other brain abnormalities. Um, and then I will see kind of your typically developing kiddo who might have um, an injury or pain um, that, you know, we were not sure about. Um, I would say more in the hospital based, um, just for people that are getting to know you, um, are required to see your patient, you know, a certain number of times before they discharge and they have mm -hmm. to be cleared usually by PT and OT to be safe at home with strength and, um, you know, getting on their clothes and being independent with just regular home activities. And then the sports med is a little bit similar to me in terms of schedule, but they're seeing, um, adult patients more at a quick, you know, usually those are about 30 or 45 minute appointments, quick appointments. Um, and you're kind of seeing patient, 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 um, documenting. Um, we use an online documentation system. It's really important to document um, in all medical professions. Um, and then, um, you know, we do evaluations as well, um, one or two times per week, which is just a new patient um, figuring it out maybe what we need to be working on or why they may need physical therapy. Sounds like you have a very um, fun career. And when I say fun, it's that you have a variety of things that you're doing. You're not tied to one field of physical therapy or a, one type of patient, but you're seeing a variety there. Do you have a preference in terms of this is the field I like, like I enjoy sports medicine the most, or I enjoy working with these kinds of patients with these kinds of ailments? What, what is your preference with the right that you have? Yeah, I think it changes. Like, that's why I really like the profession is it's a, it's a job that you can, it can change with you and you can decide to do a variety of different things. Like for me with pediatrics, there's um, school based physical therapy for those kids that um, have more significant disabilities. Um, there's private clinics that do um, just, you know, birth to three years old. And then there's kind of our clinics that do a big variety. And um, so 
I, it's changed for me. I used to really like doing the orthopedic um, kind of just pain or sprained ankle kiddos. Mm. Um, and I'm enjoying some of the more like medically complex kids that are, um, we call them medically complex because, you know, they may have um, like a G tube, which is a, a feeding tube in their abdomen. They may have oxygen. Some, we have a patient who several patients that have been needing to use trachs. Um, we have some patients with different um, other medical needs, um, and usually their goals are pretty straightforward. Like we want to try to do sitting independently or standing independently or um, kind of functional goals. So can we get up from the ground? Can we be as independent as possible? So I'm kind of enjoying those kids right now the most. When you talk about those medically complex patients, and for the viewers that don't know, like a trach is you put like a tube into your trachea, which is this portion of your throat um, for, for breathing. And, you know, what, what are the kind of steps that you would do, for example, to have that patient be uh, standing? Or could you walk us through like a scenario yeah. for a patient? Um, yeah. So the the kid I'm the kid I'm thinking about that I'm seeing right now is um, five years just turned five years old and their mother and nurse come to the therapy session so th that that particular patient has a nurse a, a lot of the day with them um, for any needs for helping with the trach you know that's kind of an emergent um, it can be an emergent situation so they need somebody that's very um, is a little bit more medically ready to deal with that. Um, so they help a lot. We do everything. She rides an adaptive trike. We just kind of move everything out of the way as we can. Um, she also has a, a G tube, um, which is that abdominal feeding tube. Um, and um, she also has a hearing, she has kind of a hearing band, hearing aid. So there's lots of different equipment that um, we would need to manage. And, um, but you know, we just, I just go with what the family and the nurse are comfortable with. And I try to do as much as we possibly can, you know, if they tell me, you know, Hey, this might not work, we'll stop. But I try mm. to go for it. Gotcha. So it, it sounds like you need to really consider like the medical uh, background of the patient, but also be mindful about what the patient and their family is kind of willing to do when you're choosing the course of action. Yeah, and also, you know, giving the patient as much autonomy as possible. So this patient um, is verbal and, you know, is able to tell us, I want to do this or I don't want to do this or, um, you know, stop or I need a break. So I think letting them obviously be in charge of what the, the, the session is going to look like as well. Wow. I would imagine that there's a lot of patience and empathy and all these other kind of soft skills that are required to really interact with the patients and their families in a, you know, effective way. And I'm curious when, it, when you're thinking about someone that wants to be a physical therapist and wants to be a good physical therapist, like what are the traits that you're kind of looking for? I think, um, yeah, empathy is really the biggest one because the reason why people are coming to us is usually, and I'm going to take kids out of this, it's usually for pain or difficulty with mobility. Um, and, you know, everybody's experience with pain or discomfort is going to be different. So I think, you know, being able to be flexible and empathetic with maybe your, your treatment plan might, might not be working that day and what can you do to, um, best meet the patient for their needs, you know, for that day. Um, with me, with kids, the parent and the family are always, you know, it's like I'm kind of dealing with two different things, right? So I'm, my focus is on the child for the patient portion, but I also need to be educating the family and instructing mm -hmm. them with what to do at home. So I think the ability to adjust the way mm -hmm. you are communicating with people is really important. Um, and I think just curiosity is about people, about mm. why, what happened, you know, like why, where did you get to be where you are today is, right. is really important. I think for patient buy-in and for you to really understand, you know, what is going to work best for this patient. So mm. to me, I think that kind of curiosity, enjoying talking to people um, you're going to see your patient regularly. I know some nurses and doctors, right? They may see their patient 
you know, not too many times, maybe a few times a year if it's like primary care. Um, but PT, you, you come, some of these kids come for, you know, a year at a time. Um, and so, you know, kind of wanting to see them and um, building relationships with them. Wow. So being empathetic, adaptive, curious, and a desire to kind of build those relationships are all kind of important. Um, and if you have all those skills and you become a physical therapist, is it all roses and rainbows or are there any challenges when it comes to, you know, performing the job? You know, maybe it's really physically taxing on the body, stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I think most people that want to become physical therapists enjoy movement. So, I mean, I think that, um, you know, it is physical. I mean, it, it's physical. It, we are on our feet all day. Um, when you work with kids, we're up and down, up and down from the floor. We might be showing them jumping jacks. We might be showing them um, balancing. You know, you demonstrate a lot of your stuff, obviously, to the patient. So you kind of need to want to do some fitness. Um I would say the healthcare system is, I don't know if other people say this, but it's challenging, right? Mm. So with insurance and reimbursement, um, especially with kids, you know, my view is if, if the doctor or the treatment team deems it's necessary, they should get it. And we really fight a lot with getting visits and getting equipment approved, um, like a wheel, like wheelchairs or other adaptive equipment that they might need. Um, that's frustrating. Um, and then sometimes just dealing with unhappy people, I think mm -hmm. in, in the whole healthcare system, you know, sometimes people aren't happy with their appointment, you know, not being able to get an appointment or, um, or if they're just going through a really rough time and having to kind of take on some of that emotional energy is, you know, there, I will say there is a lot of emotional energy that gets expended, I think mm -hmm. with the profession, um, but other than, I mean, I don't really, I don't have difficulty. I feel like, you know, the treatment is, the evaluations and the treatment, you're constantly like investigating and trying to figure, it's fun for me to do that. So I yeah. mean, that part, it doesn't, isn't intimidating for me very often, but I just like to try to figure out, you know, what's the, what's going on and what's the best way we could. I see. So even though there might be those challenges with the system and some difficult, you know, people that are very stressed out, it's that intellectual kind of curiosity that you get to fulfill is what really continues to like stimulate your desire to continue the profession. Um, are there anything, is there anything else that you would say is uh, something that folks should kind of look forward to when, when becoming a physical therapist? Is it that interaction with the patient where you feel like, oh, I've made a great difference. You know, what, what are the best moments, I guess? I think physical therapists in general are pretty happy with their job. I mean, I, I would say, I, I think it's a pretty, um, people like their jobs when they're PTs. Um, I think that it's a job, unless you own your own clinic, that you go to work, you do your work that you enjoy, and then there's not a whole lot of baggage that comes home with you, unless mm. you're the type that maybe is, you know, ruminating or thinking about, you know, something, someone or something that happened. But I would say in a lot of ways, it's not a high stress. I mean, to me, and if I'm considering like nursing or inpatient hospital, like, you know, doctors and stuff like that, I, I feel like it ha it is a great work life balance. Um, I will say the education is extensive um, and the pay, I don't think quite matches that at this point. I think it's getting better, but um, you know, three years is a long time and a lot of, you know, your own funds yeah. as well to do that. Um, so that's something that I would consider kind of when going in, but um, I don't know, I've rarely met another PT that I didn't enjoy. And um, especially being able to work OTs are so amazing that job as well. And, you know, we really collaborate a lot, the PT and the OT team, um, especially if you're working kind of in a hospital based. And so I've just noticed that good people kind of go into this profession and are generally really happy. Okay. Okay. You're making me reconsider my, my career choices. Oh, no. and maybe should yeah, I should become a PT. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the flexibility too, yeah. like we were talking about is just, you can't really get that in a lot of other jobs. And, mm. you know, it, it's, it's nice to think that it's a great job to like gauge through life with, I think. And, and it's right. a job that I could see myself, you know, I'm starting and I could see myself doing it for 
a career, you know, and um, I thought about that a lot, you know, with other okay. jobs. And yeah, so I, I, it, that was a big factor that I could kind of change it up, change my schedule, you know, work in different settings and still get still get kind of spurred on to keep going. Totally, totally. Um, well, you know, we have, you were kind of talking about the people that are involved in physical therapy and, and healthcare in general, and it sounds like it can attract a lot of good people. Uh, we have a diverse audience that we're kind of trying to reach, you know, folks that are uh, Black, Indigenous, and or people of color, low income, and just those that are traditionally kind of underrepresented in, in healthcare. And you know, as we try to think about creating a more inclusive and anti-racist culture within healthcare, um, did you have any thoughts on kind of the barriers that um, we can we break down or we need to break down or how to break them down in order to bring that more inclusive culture? Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts on this. So our clinic is a community-based um, clinic. And it, I would say we see about 80% Medicaid, Medicare. Um, we're located in Renton, Washington. So the population is diverse. We see a lot of um, Latino, Somali, um, other African, um, different African um, countries. And um, I would say Vietnamese is, is a pretty, we see a lot of Vietnamese speaking patients. Um, and I would say, you know, access to translated documents is challenging. Um, we do have good access to interpreters and interpreter services, but handing out forms or um, questionnaires or other things, the language pieces can be challenging. Um, I think too, just we need to be more culturally sensitive to different holidays, right? Like we had, um, you know, Ramadan, you know, every year and sometimes members of those families, you know, they're not eating that affects physical there, you know, that affects physical therapy. We want to make sure that we're, um, you know, being culturally sensitive about where are these people at with their, with their lives, you know, and also what are they willing to do for rehab at home? You know, do they have mm -hmm. access to um, a pool? Is that something that they want to do? You know, do they have access to uh, you know, safe place to go bike, to go do a scooter, to go to the playground. Um, so I think about that a lot. You know, yeah. I want to make sure that the biggest piece of physical therapy is really the working on things at home and, and really making it more of a, of a daily, we're going to work on this task so that you can become independent with it. If, whether that's riding a bike or, getting up from a chair or um, doing stairs, any of that stuff. Mm. So, um, you know, we, if it's not working for the home environment or it's, they're not able to do it for any reason, um, you know, we need to be aware of that and change kind of what we're, what we're asking them to do or, or suggesting. Um, and, you know, I also think the physical representation of, at least in our clinic of physical therapists, you know, we aren't very diverse. And I think that comes from, you know, the profession requires a undergraduate degree and then three years of grad school, you know, and that's not easy to do. And, um, you know, some people might not even know that they want to do it. And then when they see the profession or they're interested, it's, it's a monumental task to try to kind of go back and, and do that. So, yeah, I'd love, I'd love it if we can find more ways to make, you know, just undergrad more accessible and then these, these professions more accessible so that these kids are seeing therapists that look like them, you know, and that, um, and that can maybe be, you know, continuing, I guess, the generations of, of, of providing these, I think, essential services to, you know, everybody in the community. You, uh, very eloquently and uh, spoken. And I think those thoughts about how we, having very culturally sensitive ways to interact with patients and also thinking of innovative ways to kind of make the representation of, you know, the healthcare workforce more diverse is, is duly noted. And, you know, I think you really hit on one point there, which, which stood out, which was to become a physical therapist, it's, it's a lot of work going to undergrad and then going post undergrad. And, if, if I were a middle or a high school student that wants to kind of go into physical therapy or thinking about it, 
do you have any advice to that to to me like would it be here are the resources that i would recommend here are ways to kind of finance it or maybe it's just you know here is the way to approach your work so that you can be you know disciplined and also maybe not uh, burn out while you're doing it any kind of thoughts there or advice yeah i mean i think volunteering as as able or talking with a high school counselor um you know about not just medical field jobs but like what what are all the options right like there's dental hygienist like what are what are all the ways you can do it? Like there are, you know, PTAs, which is physical therapy assistant. And that is a, um, I don't believe you need an undergrad for that, but it is a certificate certificate or kind of like, um, what do I want to say? Like a specialized program you can go to. I feel like Green River Community College has a pathway for that. Um, but volunteering, like our clinic, does volunteering but they're they make it so you have to be 18 or older to volunteer mm. so that is a little bit of a barrier i've tried to work with that but um volunteering and i think um once you're in if you're out of high school even just pursuing some extended education if that's possible for you right so like if you're interested in the medical field you know maybe getting a job like like I did, uh, you know, in a clinic as a rehab aide, um, or um, like I know our clinic has rehab aides, and they do they see PT, OT, and speech therapy. So that's a great way for them to see, like, okay, what's this like? And they have we have it in our clinic. They have it in the hospital, mm -hmm. you know, with adults. Um, but I think some of it is just getting younger kids and younger, like, coming of age kids to really think about what are some things I like to do anyway? Like, what are my interests? Mm. What do I like to do? What do, what, what do I enjoy doing? You know, I mean, and for me, I really did. I loved watching, you know, all those like TLC sur surgery. Sh sure. I love the body. I just love the body. And so I was like, I really want to do something with the body. And I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, but I think mm. pursuing something that really like makes you curious and that you're interested in learning about. Wow, great life advice in just general, not just PT, <laughs> right? But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we are really coming close to the end here. And I guess just, you know, final thoughts that you would like to kind of impart to a student looking into healthcare or PT in general. I mean, there was a lot of wisdom there, but any, any final words? Yeah, I just would say, you know, I feel like times are kind of tough right now. And I think just, you know, keep, keep going for it and keep connecting with people. Um, you know, I, Instagram's like super and TikTok are super hot right now. There's lots of different accounts you can follow that are, you know, medical kind of medical based. Um, you know, there's some really fun and funny like nursing and PT accounts and OT right. accounts. And it kind of can give you some more glimpses, I think, into what, you know, it's fun. It, it's supposed to be humor and kind of releasing steam, but I think you can you can get a lot of information from those platforms right mm. now. Um, I guess knowing that we can't say everything's accurate, of course, but um, I would just say, you know, keep kind of finding ways that you can still learn about stuff that you're interested in and kind of get your foot in the door um, with people, um, you know, emailing a clinic if you're, you're calling, if you're curious and saying, do you guys have volunteer opportunities? Do you have shadow opportunities? Um, if you're interested in doing something and you need extra help, I think the high school counselor, career counselor path, they should really be helping you to set some of that stuff up. Um, a lot of hospitals have a volunteer, big volunteer program in their HR department. So I think picking a big hospital and just seeing, hey, what do you have available for volunteer opportunities um, are all good ways to kind of get stay in interested in the field and then get your foot in the door and kind of see if it's something that you like to do. Got it. Got it. So use your high school counselors, get some volunteer experience if you can, and go watch TikTok. <laughs> yeah, just for fun. I don't just even have fun. TikTok, but I do. It's, I follow so many fun people on Instagram and, yeah. you know, it makes me laugh. And, you know, it's, it, it shows, you know, I think nursing and PT and some of these other not quite doctor professions. I mean, these people are funny, you know, they're funny and 
and it's <laughs> it's a good time. Our jobs are fun. So I think okay. that you can see some of that with Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time, Natalie. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Thanks.